Okay, um, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. We're school, Sengyang State University from Milan, China. It's very nice for us to be here. This is Joanna, this is Bunny, this is Simon, and that is David. Very nice to be here. Okay, so today we're going to share with you our actual class about a case that was about KFC China. Still finger uh, linking good. And here, I'm really sorry because I cannot draw the big uncle here, so we just put it like a logo. But that represents KFC, I hope that you know it. Okay, so let's see the flow of our presentation. The content of presentation first will give you a brief introduction about the Chinese market and also about KFC, the enterprise. And then we'll show you the problem analysis part. And then comes the strategic alternatives. And then comes the action plans. Last but not least, we'll give you the risk and response part and also the conclusion. So now let's first see about the brief introduction of the company. Okay. So actually, for my, uh, for uh, KFC, it first founded in 1952, and uh, around the time it tried to expand this company's the scale. And also, um, we have to pay attention to that after 2003, it influenced a lot by some food security problems. Uh, for example, in 2003, it was SARS in China. So at that time, it was really a big downside for the company. And also about 2005, the Sudan Red, and also in the 2012, about the instant chicken. And actually, that's a really slow pace when it's trying to enter into China. It first entered in China, uh, entered Beijing in 1987. And in 2004, uh, the USDA just tried to ban the Chinese chickens to out, uh, export to the United States. And in the 2006, the company, uh, there is a form in China that was the company farmer form. And this is a very, uh, very big environmental change for KFC. And also, uh, the same year, the ISO 22000 was founded. And in 2008, the milk scandal thing, it also got some influence on the food safety. And because of all these, it was really a slow pace and also kind of bump it up just like roller coasters in China. But actually, because of the Chinese market is growing rapidly, like the middle class and also the social trust things, it is also developing gradually in Chinese market. So let's, uh, the thing is like this. What about the deep analysis into this case? So before we analyze the problems, let's, let's first see the industrial characteristic of fast food in China. First, let's come to the suppliers. Because the majority, nearly 90% of suppliers in China is the small self-owned small farms. So it's difficult to start quality control. And also it has a huge bargaining course with these small farmers and even the management difficulties. And as for the customers, the Chinese, uh, the Chinese market has a special characteristic. It's the price sensitive. So even a one, one yuan increase in the sales course will cause a great uh, sales de decline. And also, the Chinese fl flavor is quite different from the Western fast food that is prefer the fresh food and even the Chinese traditional food. So this customer is hard to control, right? And also, it's the new entry. The new entry is the Asian fast food, that is such as Dickles and uh, Huai Shi. That is providing the same uh, fast food as KFC, the fried chickens, and other things. And also, the substitute. In China market, there is a large amount of local fast food uh, chain, such as Chen Kung Fu. This food is more suitable for the Chinese uh, customer flavor. And also, it was stands to be more nutrition because it provided more vegetables and other vegetables in traditional China. And also, its major competitors, that is the McDonald's. We, these two, um, KFC and McDonald's have competitors in almost every corner in the world and also in China. So, and also the new entry as Burger King and other competitors. So, the industrial situation is quite competitive right now. So, so after an analysis, the industrial situations take away. Well, the situation is quite difficult in China, so maybe we need more slides. That is the supply chain. The supply chain in China, we face the uh, KFC. In China, also every, actually have two kinds of supply. The majority is the company farm model, which takes 90%. 
and also the in-house model that is nine percent. The in-house model is the processor owns the farm, the poultry, and also the workers, or owned it by themselves. But as the majority co company farmers model, the uh, there is two kinds. The first is the price quality contract. That is the farmers simply provided poultry to the processor, and the processor paying the farmers. That is the or or. Uh, persons, procedures, but also now comes to the innovative contract. That is the farmer not only providing poultry to the processor, but also paying the dep deposit money. That is to say, the processor will provide the breeds, the technological assistance to its farmers. However, this new situation uh, is taking only a small proportion in China. So uh, this supply chain faces some problems. The first is the majority price quality contract. Because this simple procedure, so it's hard to control how these farmers provide the poultry. So the farmer may be added the antibiotic and also the grew hominids uh, into the uh, poultry produ production situation. And also, but as for the innovative, it can have a better quality control. However, it only takes a small proportion in China. And as for the in-house model, it has a more strong control of the quality. However, it was proved to be cause insufficiency. So uh, uh, above all these models, we face the core problem actually is how we can make a balance through the quality control and the cost efficiency of KFC fast food in China. So we need, need to solve these problems. We, may, we need to make the choice into different alternatives. Yes, in order to make a choice, we have to first discuss the pros and cons of the ways available for us. Based on analysis before, we can draw the pros and cons of each matter. The first matter is to import the chicken from America. We can see the pros is that American chicken has owned a reputation of good quality, and also it has a very good quality control system. But the cons is that, what a pity, China is so far away from USA, so the cost especially the trans uh, transportation cost and the operating cost during the, tra uh, during the transportation will be very high. And also, the chicken, the chicken meat is un unfresh and also it's in insensitive to the market change. And, and for outsourcing, outsourcing method, the pros is so much. The first is cost saving. The second is convenient. The third is the large amount of suppliers and also it owns the advantage of localization, but the big problem lies on the quality. And the third method is a new method, which is known as the self-owned farm. We, we, if we establish such kind, of uh, such kind of farm, we can have a very good quality control because it's, it's fully owned by us. And also, it's very, it has an advantage of also the localization because it's located in China. However, it's uh, it has some disadvantages, like we are not uh, expert on establishing such kind of farm, and we are in inexperienced. And also, it suffers from the cost, especially the financial cost and also the political cost. Uh, for example, we have to bargain about the land and the authority of establishing such kind of farm with the local government or so on. And you know that's a very Chinese style problems and. Back to the principle, we, we can see our goal is to balance the quality control and cost effectiveness. So what should we do? Let's first concern about the problems of quality control. The import and the self-owned uh, self farm, uh, farm methods uh, both provide the uh, advantages of quality control. But, however, you know, the import, import method is Causing too much. It's not only uh, it's not only far away from the uh, from China, so it costs the it has the tra transportation cost, and also we based on analysis before we know that the Chinese uh, Chinese customers are very sensitive to the price, and also they won't get the fresh food. If we if we are not uh, following their habits of eating, we can't get our success. So. We believe that this import method is un, uh, is inappropriate for us to to get. So we decided to choose the self-owned <coughs> farm, and also in order to uh, in order to get the cost effectiveness, 
we decided to take the outsourcing method. That means we want a mixed method, mixed strategy method to uh, construct our new supply chain. And we divide this strategy into short term and long term. We define the short term uh, as a period within six months and the long term like the after one year. And for the short term, we decided to integrate the supply chain and also we, go, we are going to modify the contracts, which is facing a great problem in, mentioned in the case. As for the long term, we decided to establish self-owned farms. That's a very important part of our, our um, strategy. We are not only going to train the local farmers, but also uh, showing them as a model to be uh, good farmers to the, to, the other, to the others. Our purpose of setting this is also going to deliver the concept of KFC, which you are going to discover la uh, discuss later. And with this strategy, what action plan should we do? Now, let me introduce you the specific action plans of KFC in China. The first one, we could um, best describe our action plans as double integration because this is the integration of both supply chain management and also the integration of public relations strategies. Let's first take a look at the integration of supply chain management. We divide our phases into two parts. The first one is the short term. What should we do in the short term? The first, first one is to integrate our supply chain by cutting down our suppliers. As we can see, KFC in China has already owned many, many suppliers in the very small scale we lose, we have already lost the control over the quality of products they have provided, which means they'll provide us with a very bad quality of products and it will influence us both our profitability and also our brand image. Therefore, we are going to cut this small scale farmers and integrate our supply chain into a larger one, which consists of large companies who has control and assurance over their quality. And because of the um, a small number of uh, suppliers we have, we have better negotiability over the prices. And that is one um, short-term plan. And the second short-term plan is the modification of current contract. As my partners have introduced, there are many contract types in China, but currently um, what KFC and its suppliers are currently adopting is the one by, uh, by the uh, qu quantity and price one. One would, uh, that our supplier would deliver us the products while KFC would just give them the money. But we need some more innovations on these contracts. We're going to add more terms in this contract. We're going to provide awards about the quality. We can provide discounts so as to ensure that all our suppliers can provide us with higher quality of products by this incentive methods. So let's come to see the long term of integration of supply and chain management. That is what we have been emphasizing on the establishment of self-owned farms. So what is the self-owned self farms actually be serving <coughs> for? We provide our vision and missions. What about the vision? The vision of this self-owned farm is to deliver the culture for a safety food in China. We're telling our dearest consumer that we are not the one who is destroying the food security in China, but we are the one where the warriors standing in the frontier of fighting against food security problems. So how are we going to achieve this vision? That is the mission of the self-owned farms. The first one is to create highest quality of foods. We not only depend on our suppliers to give us food, we, only, we also created food ourselves through the self-owned farms with the highest um, quality of techniques and also um, the best efforts we can put inside. And the second is the paradigm to train local farmers into um, more qualified farmers, which means this is not only a production center and also a place for teaching, for training our suppliers, our small scale suppliers or even larger scales of suppliers into more qualified producers of food and ensure the higher quality. And the third one is to promote the poultry breeding technique. As we can see, there are many parts involving in the production of our products. Therefore, this farm could also be used to um, uh, promote and also to do research on how we can more efficiently manage the production of our products. So after the integration of supply chain management, let's take a look at how we could um, integrate our PR strategies. 
The first one, of course, is the continuing use, use of our present successful PR strategies, which include the employee interviews. Um, we have a recent investigation has already shown that customers are very satisfied with our interviews with our employees, claiming how safe our food are and how they're confident about our food. Therefore, we should carry on this advertisements. And the second part of this um, proper PR strategies is the farm visit we already had. And we're going to add more in the um, future far, uh, self-owned farms. And let's look at uh, the second one. is the formal procedure for crisis dealing techniques, which is, we also call it crisis PR strategy. We can see that um, uh, KFC are always not behaving themselves very well during a crisis. Therefore, we need a formal procedure to be dealing with scandals and this kind of investigation. And the third one is the open of self-owned farm, as we have introduced. We are opening our farm to let our consumer know that it's a culture of us to provide you with the highest quality and safest food in China. And last but not least, it's the annual report to show our sincerity. Because we have been attaching great importance on the food security problem, we're going to initiate annual reports on food security every year, which is available on the investor's annual report and also on the internet. With just one button, you could see how sincere we are and how, um, how uh, important we have taken this problem. And that's all about our double integration strategies. But we know that no, no action plan in this world is perfect. What about the risk? Where does the risk of this action plan lie? Oh, you just leave that part to me. I know you're very excited about changing the world. Just speaks like a spokesman for KFC. Okay, now, so it comes to the risk and response part. We predicted three of the risks and we provided three responses. The very first one was about the quality control. Actually, we can see that there are enough regulations in Chinese market, but still we have problems. That's something to do with the action part. So we are trying to build the entry standards for all those uh, self-founded farms and, and the kind of action plans we're trying to provide. And also, we're going to go with the kind of laws and regulations. We're just trying to push push all those things to come out into the into the food market. And the second risk was about the farmers' own way of doing farming. Actually, they have their own traditions. What we're trying to do is try to make the technical improvements. At the same time, we're going to go with the universities because some of these farmers, they believe in those university students because we still have the kind of way of uh, the university students going into the farming, farming things. So we think that this is a very good way to help in such kind of method to make it um, better. The third one was about the rebuild of social trust. Actually, you can see that a lot of things go with the kind of social trust. What we're trying to do is to build a good reputation, not only among the farmers, but also among those customers. And we're going to gradually influence the public about their perspectives on us. After seeing all this, let's see the conclusion of it. Actually, you can feel that. We are trying to tell about this value chain. Actually, uh, for all of those action plans, we are trying to make some differences on this part. That is the supply chain. We are trying to make it a much safer way of doing that and to this industry. And then we are going to have some supportive ideas about the crisis management at the same time, the public relationship strategies. And we're also trying to provide a procedure. And uh, then comes to the social, uh, cooperate social responsibility. This is a very important part for those enterprises. Actually, we're going to be entrepreneurs in the future. Every enterprise, they should hold the, um, the kind of uh, social responsibility at the same time, the profitability. This is how can uh, an enterprise go further and further. So last, let's say out a very good slogan, what we are trying to provide for KFC in the future, and that is we're not only doing chickens right, we also have the right chicken. And that is all for our presentation, and only left the part for Q&A session. That is all. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much. Uh, University of Stanford, your presentation. Now we'll move on for the Q&A session, which is 15 minutes. So we we'll start now. Okay. Okay, um, thank you very much. Um, first of all, I have to say that I'm quite innovative to put the slide over <laughs> and it feels like a PowerPoint, but I think we all point some about PowerPoint anyway. Um, my first question is, have you mentioned about the, 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 the mix between the short term and the long term, the tactical and the strategy, the long term strategy about, um, what's the mix? Is it 90, 
ninety percent, ten percent, or what's the mix between the two strategy you want to put? Because it's a mixed strategy for you guys. Uh, actually, uh, uh, as for the supply chain strategy, we put on the short term and the long term. So we think that maybe in the short term, we will pay maybe the majority concentration on the uh, on the uh, uh, on the reorganization of the. Uh, uh, outsourcing farm supply, farm, farm suppliers. But we think that it, we need time to build ourselves on the farm because considering the time and the course and other things, so and also the reputation. So we need time and in the long term, we hope that we will not cancel the outsourcing, but also we will uh, maybe, maybe the uh, Maybe the self-owned farm will be built up, but it will more set as a role model in the industry. We will tell them what is the best uh, organization, supply chain, and also the more scientific uh, production. And, and, and it will set an example for the self-owned farm. But we think that in China, the majority is still self-owned farm. Yeah. And so as to the, if you want to know about the specific proportion of how much our uh, self-owned farm take up and how much the outsourcing part take up. We believe in the short term, of course, the dominant one is still the outsourcing one because we need time to build the self-owned farm. But we don't t intend to um, make the, our uh, self-owned farm dominant in the future because we are setting a paradigm. We're telling the world that we are doing this right and we're teaching them. We're using our self-owned farm as a radiation so as we could also control the cost and also provide a quality control. Thank you. Okay, you mentioned in one of your first slides that uh, some options for, uh, for increasing quality would be negotiating prices and contract modification. And uh, some concerns about that is that farmers or the primary source will cut costs and quality will be affected. To be fair, you did mention that you would have incentives though. So what incentives would you have in place to stop the cost expense cuts and, and, uh, and the contract modification? What, what incentives would be in place to make sure quality was still high? Um, for example, uh, we're ordering uh, products from this farm and because well, we notify, uh, we noticed that some there, there has some uh, uh, behaviors of cutting the expense so as to uh, lower the quality and try to be more profitable, uh, then we will encourage those who haven't done so and who will do uh, do better, like providing more orders, switching orders from this um, <coughs> badly performed uh, farm to the uh, better performed farm, and also we will maybe um, offer a higher rate than. Uh, the others, so as to form a competition within our suppliers to ensure the quality can be improved. Yeah, may I add one more thing? Uh, actually, we're trying to build database according to the, the, the time is calling for a big database. Actually, we're trying to make the statistics about uh, our suppliers about um, to record their performances into statistics so that it's very easy to make, it qual to make the quantities clear. So that is a very easy way to do all those in incentive methods later. So yeah. you mean yeah. record keeping, keeping uh, details on the suppliers, you mean? Yeah, on the suppliers, like um, how many chickens we sold and how many qualified chickens. Quality rate right and everything yeah. like that. They may have records on it, mm -hmm. just like credit cards. Yeah. Well, firstly, I, I think uh, excellent job on presentation in English. I, I don't think I could do this in Chinese. So <laughs> really good job. Uh, I think you should recognize that. Um, love the presentation, but we are running a business. How much will this cost, and what can we get in return? Okay. Um, shall, shall I? Uh, yeah. I'm okay. First. Okay. Um, we actually have gone through this problem very specifically during our discussion about how much it cost. I think, of course, it would cost a great deal, but we don't know the specific number because they haven't provided a specific data. But we think there will be a payback period about two to three years. Um, we don't, we are, because we are running a business, so we cannot only consider this problem financially, but we also need to consider it in the opportunity cost, right? If we cut the cost in managing this uh, these things, then the quality losses, the quality costs, and because the quality, many consum consumers may go, I think these costs 
is absolutely to outweigh the cost. We have invested in these projects, and we have mentioned this mix will is com a complement with many incentive methods, which won't cost us too much. The only great cost is the uh, self-owned farm, which we also have explained we will we will not make it a very large portion of our operations. Therefore, um, I think the cost will there will be costs, but all good projects will need costs at the first place. But we think at the end we'll win profits to cover the cost. Yeah, may I have one more thing? Yeah. Okay, even though this finance and accounting have said something for some people studying tourism, we should not make many comments on that. But we are uh, making that kind of uh, mixed method, mixed strategy. And that is about how many self-founded, that's a big cost of money in our action plans. Another part is the outsourcing. Actually, we're trying to balance the two according to the statistics, if we can get any about this company. And then that will be, we're getting some strategies and for the action plan, the detailed things may be de decided by the company, I guess. Yeah. I was just wondering if you could summarize for me uh, just what incentive, what, what plans you had for the consumer and the shops and, and the marketing perhaps and uh, PR. Could you just summarize what sort of plans you had for that aspect of the business? Uh, actually, we have combined uh, the uh, quality enhancement of the supply chain and also with the PR that is we consider is the major part of the marketing. Because we think that the core problem of all this scandal and the public relationship problem is lie in its uh, quality control problem. And, and so we need we place the uh, regain of the supply chain uh, in the first place. And also, we, uh, when, we, when we reorganize the supply chain, we build what we call the spiritual center that is self-owned farm. We, we are not only produce the chicken, but we produce the healthy chicken cultural to the, to the society. And we think it is the best uh, uh, strategy to uh, make the public relationship because we think it's not intentional to make marketing, but it's na natural because we increase our quality. and and natural naturally we will enhance our public relationship and also according to the crisis the schedule we have a procedure to uh, to make this uh, emergency problems right so your model is more uh, community or society understanding and education and not so much a focus on the shop but uh, beautifying the, the the shop floor and things that's uh, uh, the the, the uh, KFC outlets where the consumer goes to buy uh, Probably not a focus on that. You would more focus, your model will more focus on community understanding uh, and promotion. I'm going to make some makeups. Actually, that's part in the, in the crisis part. Because actually, if you, you want to get to a very complete procedure for those kind of PRs and those kind of crisis management, the very important thing is that what you can make the customers know. And that is also for those uh, strategies, for those action plans that make to the customers so we're all in the crisis management part. For example, those kind of advertisements in the, in the kind of uh, shops and, and all those kind of things. That's also uh, what we're trying to express on the kind of crisis management. Yeah, uh, in addition, we have thought about the product promotion to attract more customers, but we believe that uh, only if we can provide the qualified food and the healthy food to them, and they are convinced of us that uh, they, they are convinced that uh, they are eating the healthy food. Can they go to KFC to to have food? So the core uh, the core idea of us is to deliver the healthy uh, healthy food culture and the healthy food idea to the customers, so that no matter what we sell, they they believe that they are healthy and they will have uh, they will consume it and uh, be our customers. Allow me to conclude yeah. <laughs> it. That is um, the two parts of customers. One is the customers that come into the shops of us. Another one is potential things, potential customers. So we're trying to do these two parts to make our customers, the markets better, uh, larger and larger. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have one question. Can you go back to the slide about uh, risk and response? Yeah. I remember there's three parts. And one is about the regulation. <coughs> yeah, that's it. You mean? Um, can, it, can you elaborate more about the goal with law and legislation? I mean, this one? Yeah, yeah. What, what, what do you want to do with it? I, uh, I'm not so clear. 
Yes, of course. Like that um, actually, uh, it's not a kind of thing to point out that Chinese people are kind of uh, too depend on those legislations. It's just if you told them that this is this is not good, they will not follow it. But if you say that this break the law, they will do it. So that for those enterprises, if they want to make their social responsibilities better, they have to cooperate with all the government things and the law things. You can also see that for KFC, it's, it's getting into a lot of lawsuits and some things like that. So if it's uh, an example to make all those enterprises in this industry to, to pay attention to the laws and legislations at the same time, to push the government to make more legislations about the food safety, I guess in the future, Chinese Chinese food industry will be will be a very so bright future. Under yeah. that strategy, what's the role for the government, for example? Uh, um, is it only the involved party owns the KFC and the farmers, or is it involved both tri parties, government, KFC, and the farmers? I think that that's for the whole process, all the supply chain, including and also the outside environments, including the government, including the farmers, including those industry participants. So you were just saying comply with the, all the laws from end to end. Com is yeah. it compliance pretty much what you mean by this? A comply little bit. With the law? Yeah. I, I, I was really excited when you guys did the introduction and you laid out the five forces. I think you did that really, really well. And I always think that if you can define the problem well, the solution is already there. But I think you guys didn't address all the five sources in your solution, which I think related to Matthew's point. You, you, you mentioned competitor, you mentioned new entries, and you mentioned that the, you know, the, the, the consumer taste is changing. But I think the recommendation does not address those. I think you, you, your, yours address the supply chain pretty deeply, well. So just again, to think about how are you going to, what are you doing about com competition? Because you've highlighted there's a potential problem, or it is a problem, but what are we doing about it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we have talked about the promotion of, of our food, like localization. Uh, we know that the Chinese taste, uh, they, their, their flavor is different from the north or to the south. So we might, we might have some, uh, like, to, to divide China into several areas to provide them with different kinds of taste. Like in Sichuan, people uh, prefer the spicy food, and uh, in uh, other place, they may prefer the salty food. And we will have some specific design for them uh, in certain areas. Uh, but it, it really need a very very complex project, and we believe that it is not the core problems we have to think about, especially in this case. So. Uh, we just uh, mention about the competitions and uh, we uh, ignore the very complex, uh, com complicated analysis of this. But we have already th think about it and also uh, we believe that uh, people will, uh, will, will, be, uh, will be willing to accept this kind of changes. Uh, especially uh, we will provide them a kind of like the uh, Western food and the Chinese food mixture. Yeah, um, actually I have the same impression uh, as well. Uh, um, I appreciate that it's generally a short period of time that you guys prepared it. Uh, uh, but um, maybe just mention it, uh, um, this is your focus on the supply chain and for the rest, you will, maybe we, we won't touch on it in depth Then may help a little bit more to yeah. understand. Yeah. I think your, your team is really good at fleshing out the problem. Again, I go back to the point of the pros and cons. You listed the options you have, yeah. and you laid it out the pros and cons really well. You defined the problem really well. But your recommendation was just to combine B and C. But then in your recommendation, how are you going to address the cons which you have addressed? So one of the things is expertise. right? We have no expertise in managing a farm. So your recommendation is we're going to own a farm. So how are we going to get the expertise? Uh, we can learn the experience from the local farmers. But uh, if, if we only establish our own new farm, they will, we will be the competitors well, be, with the local farmers, and they are not willing to cooperate with us. But if we just set up a model for them, they will be willing to help us, because we can increase their profit. And we think, uh, we think this kind of cooperation Thank you. Okay. Tough question. Thank you. <laughs>